Hello, this is Jack Jackson. We're continuing our study of college geometry with our second video. This one, we're going to start working with the notes for the first week of notes that I have for my class. And if you notice, my notes are set up with a uh, hyperlink table of contents. And this can see uh, what you can expect to see in this particular playlist. We're going to talk about an introduction to geometry and early history a little bit. We'll talk about the elements of axiomatic system properties of a set of postulates, rules of logic, proofs, diagrams, drawings, and constructions. Then we'll talk about some sets of postulates for geometry, synthetic versus analytic geometry. Then we'll talk about Euclid's postulates, David Hilbert's postulates, Burkhoff's postulates, and the postulates that we're going to be using for uh, unified geometry. We'll talk a little bit about rewriting geometric statements in if-then form talk about negating statements and writing a proof and so probably each one of these will more likely have its own uh, little short video in this playlist so first of all carefully read the course policy and procedure document for an overview of the course uh, including course goals and you will see uh, some of the course goals that I went over in the previous playlist uh, previous video in this playlist so geometry has long been one of the most important areas of mathematical study. It's the first area of serious formal mathematical inquiry, and it remained a central area of study through at least the mid 20th century um, and continues to be studied since that time. If one were to list the top five mathematicians alive at any particular time, it's likely that most, if not all of the five would have seriously studied geometry from the time of Thales in the 6th century BCE through Hilbert in the 19th and 20th centuries. Common Core Standards for K-12 Mathematics Education and the state standards for many states including Arkansas and Oklahoma um, call for the integration of all Euclidean geometry topics of this course including transformations along with some study of non-Euclidean geometry in the high school curriculum and because the importance of geometry as a mathematical topic and its place in the public school curriculum, this course is currently required of all our mathematics majors. Now, the Greek word geometry is made of, of the roots geo from Gia, the prim primeval mother earth goddess uh, from Greek mythology, and metri from metron to meaning to measure. So, therefore, geometry literally means earth measure or measuring the earth. So at its foundation, the field of geometry rose from the desire to measure and determine spe special relationships and spatial relationships among things in our environment. And most ancient cultures developed at least some rudimentary ideas in geometry. And many discovered many specific geometric relationships that were useful in practical situations, such as surveying and building. Many of these uh, predate the uh, classical um, study of geometry by the Greeks. However, it was the ancient Greeks who were the first to systematically develop geometry as exercises in logic. The work of these ancient mathematicians gave rise to the notation of a mathematical proof based upon certain basic rules of logic applied to a series of statements, each of which is fully justified. The idea of a proof is the heart of mathematics. In fact, one can go so far as to say that proofs are mathematics. That is what makes mathematics mathematics. Now, Thales and Miletus, part of Greece, uh, around the 6th century BCE, is credited with being the first to insist on this idea of a rigorous proof. And because of this, and because of his extensive work in geometry and arithmetic, he is known as the father of geometry, and sometimes either even the father of mathematics. I've also seen Euclid listed as the father of geometry, but I think Thales more appropriately deserves that title. Pythagoras is another well-known early Greek geometer who was the founder of a famous group of philosophers musicians and mathematicians called the Pythagoreans who lived on the Greek island of Samos around 500 BCE. 
and they discovered not only important geometric results, but also some early number theory, early foundations of music theory, and examples of pure mathematics in nature. The Greeks and others continued to develop geometry, and the Greeks particularly developed it with a focus on logical deduction of core results. The very famous Greek philosopher and teacher Plato clearly viewed the study of geometry of utmost importance, since he is reputed to have the following words inscribed above the entrance to his academy. Quote, uh, of course translated here, let no one ignorant of geometry enter here. Around 300 BCE, Euclid of Alexandria at the, uh, the mouth of the uh, Nile River in Egypt collected all mathematics that was developed in the Greek world during the th previous three centuries. He added to it and organized it into one of the world's first textbooks called The Elements. The Elements is actually a 13 volume work about geometry and arithmetic. In particular, it presents geometry as a structured series of propositions followed logically from a set of postulates. This work collected so much of mathematics that was known up until that time, and it did it so well that nearly all earlier geometric writings have been lost. Remember back in those days, it was a very painstaking uh, process to, to write something down. It had to be recorded on a papyrus or tablets of clay or stone and, uh, and kept uh, well before anything like the printing press when, when these things were, uh, were well no, well distributed. So things were written by hand. And so uh, Elements was so well done that typically they just kind of didn't bother recopying the earlier works as much. So the Elements is actually the second most translated book of all time. Only the Bible surpasses it. And it's one of the most influential books in history. It provided the blueprint for how mathematics is conceived and presented. It, and the works derived from it, have been a core foundational part of mathematics from its writing to the present. And we will apply a modern approach to the study of Euclidean geometry, but at its core it has Euclid's original approach. Euclid was invited to Alexandria by King Ptolemy, who asked for a shortcut to, lear to learning um, geometry. And uh, Euclid replied, there is no royal road to geometry. So even a king can only master geometry by careful study and some hard work. Once a student asked Euclid, what shall I gain by learning these things? And Euclid replied, give him a coin since he must make gain out of what he learns. So Euclid clearly valued learning for its own sake and he had little use for a student who only wanted to learn something for immediate practical benefit. Uh, and while geometry certainly has lots of very practical benefits, I agree wholeheartedly with the sentiment of these two statements of Euclid. It's the study of geometry has in its uh, best value a tool for developing the mind, which of course has practical value of itself. For a quick introduction and historical overview of some early geometry, I'd like you to read the Encyclopedia Britannica article on geometry. You can see the link to it there. Also read the Wikipedia article on history of geometry, and it has some more history of, uh, er, of contributions to geometry from various different cultures. So even though geometry is certainly a practical area of mathematics, and that's where it got its start, with many applications developed before and after Euclid, the approach in the elements is really a non-applied pure mathematics approach. It's this approach and the value of deductive reading, reasoning that made the study of geometry a key component in the curriculum of any educated individual for millennia. When I took a high school geometry course, it really was misnamed. The title should have been an introduction to logic, deductive reasoning, and proof via the study of Euclidean plane geometry. Well, that's a mouthful. Unfortunately, that's too long to write on a transcript, so the name was often shortened to something like just geometry. And over the following couple of decades, 
educators decided they could make the course easier and cover more ge geometric topics if they would de-emphasize or even eliminate proofs from the class. However, that was definitely a case of throwing out uh, the baby with the bathwater. This did allow for the inclusion of more modern topics, including some three-dimensional geometry, occasionally some brief introductions to non-Euclidean geometry, and especially uh, more emphasis on transformational geometry. However, it missed the main point of why geometry has been such a key component of the curriculum. It's amazing to see the difference in textbooks from 1980 to 2000. Unfortunately, the new com newer Common Core Standards for Mathematics return to an emphasis on proof while including some of the topics mentioned above. I am my, it's my hope that high school geometry courses will make a transition back to uh, an introduction to logic and proof and that Euclidean geometry is the, the vehicle for that and that the emphasis is not on the geometry but upon writing proofs and understanding the logic behind it. That's what mathematics is all about.